Hello, good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Douglas Emeka Oko, consultant neurosurgeon with the Brain and Spine Surgery Consortium here in Abuja, Nigeria. So today, I'm going to be specifically talking about reversing medical tourism. Working smart, working together, as you can see there. So the focus of my talk today is going to be about delivering high-end complex brain surgery care in Nigeria. Now, as you can see there, the only way to achieve this is collaborating, cooperating, and partnering. We can definitely achieve more by doing this. Now, what could be the terms of this kind of collaboration or collabo? Key things, sharing information, sharing knowledge and skill, so, so fundamental. Sharing equipment, sharing risk, and like you can see there, really in small, sharing profit. But as you can see, I put that in small because it's more important to share all the other things because those are the key things when we talk about patient-centered care, information, knowledge and skill. Equipment, risk, definitely profit is important, but we need to come to a point in Nigeria where profit goes down the ladder. Now, what is the network or the team that will be involved in delivering high-end complex brain surgery care in Nigeria? The anesthetist and the ICU specialist, ICU, intensive care unit specialist, definitely the physiotherapist. The nurses, very crucial, very fundamental the neurosurgeons or brain and spine surgeons and definitely there are other healthcare professionals other professionals as well that get involved to make this sort of patient-centered care that is efficient and effective and to tell you the truth ladies and gentlemen we are trending we are going there already now the key thing here remember collabo cooperating partner it's about working together no competition. Networking, very fundamental. People pulling together. The objective here is to improve local outcomes, i.e. patient-centered care. The kind of patients who go to Germany, go to UK, other countries, India, sorting those kind of patients out here and improving the outcomes of those patients is the key thing here. And basically, reversing medical tourism. Now, who are our real competitors? The babalaos, the pastors, the imams, the very small, small patent medical shops here and there. You can see that. Message your body here. Those are our competitors. And definitely we have our foreign competitors as well. The private hospitals in some of the countries I mentioned earlier, Germany, United Arab Emirates, UK, US, and other countries. Even in Ghana here, just next door, we actually have patients going for oncology care there. And yet we are supposed to be the giant of Nigeria. No, all that's going to be reversed. Now, this is the APC manifesto just before they came into power in 2015, May. Okay, now if you zone on the fourth and fifth thing there, they talk about basically world-class hospitals in, a, in five years from when they come in. Okay, now it's more than two years now, so they have less than three years. Let's see if they can achieve that. The other thing they talk about is investing in cutting-edge technology and telemedicine. Now, those two key things there in their manifesto basically are zooming in on complex tertiary healthcare, not malaria or typhoid. I mean, when you talk about people who have brain tumors, people who need kidney transplants, that's what they are talking about. So they are actually talking about trying to stop medical tourism. Now, where we are going here is that the real private healthcare sector, now real is in inverted commas there, double commas, okay? Real. There's the private sector in Nigeria that is not real, okay? But we're talking about the real private sector. And what the real private sector is doing is that when you look at number four and number five of the APC's manifesto, the present government now, okay? When you talk about stopping medical tourism or going to that next level of reversing medical tourism, the real private healthcare sector players are the ones that are going to brave the way and pave the way and hopefully at some point in the next 15 20 years the public sector will start following now examples of collaborations 
Remember what we are talking about with this collab, working together and working smart. Okay? Now, the Brain and Spine Surgery Consortium, which I represent, has collaborated with a few top class real private sector players in Abuja. I'll mention a few of them. So you can see that list. That list. Now, one of them is Cedar Crest Hospital here in Abuja. The other is Alliance Hospital, also here in Abuja. The other is Wellington Clinics. Specifically, they provide neurosurgery care. Neurosurgery, brain and spine surgery care. The Live Bridge Diagnostic Center have very powerful machines for doing diagnostics, brain scans and all that. This is dear to my heart. The Zeta Medical and Diagnostic Center actually has a firm partnership with the Brain and Spine Surgery Consortium. Okay? Now, let's look at a few of the things that some of these real private sector players in healthcare bring to, to the table. Now, look at that. Fantastic theatre, isn't it? Now, that yellow arrow there is showing you a neural navigation system which is for accuracy of trying to get to a brain tumor or any other sort of lesion or problem within the brain. Fantastic, isn't it? And I think it's one of the few in Nigeria, probably the only one, actually. Now, that's an operating microscope. Very important for when you're doing very detailed um, um, uh, micro neurosurgery um, for very, very technical operations. And this one is in the Citadel Medical and Diagnostics uh, Center. Um, that's an intensive care unit, a four bed intensive care unit. Fantastic, they have all the monitors and everything. This is in Cedar Crest Hospital. And finally, that is a 1.5 Tesla MRI scan. Now, the Tesla is used to measure the magnetic field in MRI scanners. Okay, Most of the MRI scanners you have around are 0.2 to 0.4 Tesla. The magnetic field is directly proportional to the type of image or the clarity of the image that you get. Okay, These chaps, the LifeBridge Diagnosis Center, they are one of the few chaps that have this machine. Now, basically, these real private sector players that I've mentioned, the Brain and Spine Surgery Consortium has collaborated with them to actually deal with very complex cases, brain cases. And I'll give you a few stories and a few examples. The first one is a 13-year-old boy who was involved in a road traffic accident and sustained a very life-threatening head slash brain injury. Okay? Now, this shows the scans of the boy. As you can see, the one on your left-hand side, as you're looking at the screen, is just after the boy had the accident. You can see the blood clot just around there and um, basically the yellow arrow is showing the blood clot and there's lots of pressure within this boy's brain. He had an operation and you can also see the scan on your right, your right which is the scan after he had the operation. He did very well. Next story is that of a 70 year old lady who was developing some, some personality changes, some behavioral problems and then progressed to being drowsy and couldn't actually walk and that's her scan. The yellow arrow shows a big blood clot which has actually liquefied and causing lots of pressure on the brain. She also had an operation, two holes in the skull to let that blood clot out and she did well as well. Continuing, another story again, lady in her 50s having problems with her vision, progressively getting worse and some headaches as well. And there you go, those are a few scans there and all those arrows are pointing to a very large tumour at the base of her brain causing lots of pressure on the nerve to her eyes and that's why she was getting problems with her sight. She went on to have an operation and in fact, just quickly, maybe in these few seconds, we just show this video of, of her having this done, actually using a telescope going through the nose to the base of the skull. That's fine, just a short video there. The next one is a, a um, lady in her late 30s, developed weakness on the side of the face, some speech and swallowing problems, definitely some walking problems as well. And look at that. Scan shows a massive brain tumor pressing on the brain stem. In fact, the yellow arrow shows the brain tumor and the red arrow actually shows the brain, the, the, the brain stem. Now the brain stem is the clockwork that has all the vital centers that control your lungs, control your breathing, control your heart and all that. Now look at that amount of pressure. She also went on and had an operation as well and also did very well. 
although she still has some drooping of her face on that left side as well. Fifth example, fifth story is an eight-year-old boy who developed some headaches, became really drowsy and actually couldn't walk very well, really unsteady on the, on the feet. And then the scan there shows a large brain tumor in what we call the hind brain, causing lots of pressure on the brain stem. Remember the brain stem, the clockwork, houses all those important structures I talked about. He went on, first of all, to have a shunt, basically because that brain tumor we can see there, the with the yellow arrow was causing lots of pressure on the plumbing work in the head and lots of build up of fluid so you had to have a shunt i.e a shunt going a tube going into the water space in the brain and connected to the tummy to drain that to reduce the pressure in the head and then further went on to have that tumor taken out really complex operation but yet he did well because on the right side you can also see the post op or after the operation well, basically all the tumor is out patient did very well as well now, last but not the least, is this nine-month-old boy who had some issues when he was very young, when he was just born, around when he was born, and then developed premature fusion of what they call the sutures. The sutures are actually the joints of the skull. And I'll show you some pictures. As you can see, those are the sutures there, okay? And the image on your right is just showing the skull. This is what we call it three-dimensional reconstruction and then the other actually shows what the baby's head actually looks like so abnormal shape of head because of this premature fusion of these joints on the head he had what we call a strip shave just taking the bone in the middle of the head so you can create space for the head to grow now as you can see there are very complex cases done here in nigeria these patients didn't have to go outside at all why because of the working together and the working smart between the brain and spine surgery consortium and all these other real healthcare private sector players like I, I talked about collabo is the key for just one reason and one reason only the nigerian patients are worth it